It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, a presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope? They are CBS News correspondents Larry LeSeur and Walter Cronkite. Our distinguished guest for this evening is the Honorable John M. Butler, United States Senator from Maryland. Our guest tonight is probably best known as the man who his first try for public office knocked over the redoubtable Democrat Senator Millard Tidings of Maryland. He is also one of the 22 senators who voted against censure of Senator McCarthy. Senator Butler, you said at the time that uh, a vote of censure against Senator McCarthy might lead to a code of conduct by the Senate which would prove harmful in the future. Just what did you mean by that? Well, I think if a senator is unable to speak freely in connection with the official acts and actions of other senators, it certainly has a tendency to shut a senator up and make him probably think more of what he shouldn't say than think more of what he should say and do in serving the people of his state. Would you feel obligated to vote for Senator McCarthy because uh, he had helped you in your campaign in Maryland or because you felt in favor of what he essentially was trying to do? Well, no, I think you've missed both ends of my <laughs> dilemma. Uh, I didn't uh, vote censor or vote against censor uh, except for one reason, and that was that I couldn't square it legally. I didn't think there was any legal basis for a censor. Senator in other Butler. words, if I may elaborate just a moment and briefly, a senator, in my opinion, should not be required to go before a Senate election subcommittee if he hasn't counsel and the minimum right to cross-examine, especially so if he has not been subpoenaed. If the Senate wanted the senator from Wisconsin to appear and testify, they could have issued a subpoena for him. If he then refused to come, then I think the Senate would have had a real basis for a censor on that count. I'm particularly interested in the fact that uh, in describing this situation, you used the word dilemma. Uh, <laughs> there was some well, thought that uh, there wasn't any dilemma in, in your case, that uh, you have been staunchly alongside of Senator McCarthy all along in well, all that, of his uh, uh, actions and movements. I think anybody that reads my remarks that I made on the floor of the Senate will have that illusion dispelled very rapidly. It was a very hard decision to make. I made the decision solely on the basis of what was best for the United States of America and for the Senate. Senator, I, I think felt it is that recognized. the Senate, and I still go. feel that the Senate has hurt itself uh, and that the precedent established, if there has been a precedent established, I think a lot of senators would like to think that there has been none. I think there has been, and I think it will hurt us. Well, Senator, I know that you are regarded as one of the legal brains of the Senate. But tell me, uh, since you voted against censure of Senator McCarthy, how do you feel about his criticism of President Eisenhower? Do you go along with that? No, I made a statement in connection with that immediately after the Senator's remarks. I happen to be a member of the Internal Security Subcommittee of the Committee on the Judiciary. And as such, I have worked very closely with the Attorney General of the United States and indeed the President of the United States. And I said in my statement, and I sincerely believe, that the President of the United States could never be said to be soft on communism. Well, do you think that the President can now count on the faction uh, of the GOP, the right wing, who apparently have gone along with Senator McCarthy because they think he's soft on communism, or uh, will he be able to uh, provide his own solutions for the country without forming an alliance with the Democrats? Well, I think that the Republican Party, uh, I could not conceive of such senators as Eugene Milliken of Colorado uh, being called a, a right-wing Republican senator or a senator who would not follow the lead of the President of the United States. In my opinion, he's one of the most able men, if not the most able man, in the United States Senate. Yet he voted against a censor, and I think many other men did it, and they did it honestly. They did it trying to do what they felt was right for the United States. Do you feel that Senator McCarthy has damaged his own position by this recent attack on the president? 
Well, I don't think there's any question that he's weakened his position, yes. Well, from what I gather, you think that the Senate, uh, that the uh, president can now defy whatever remains of the right wing of the party? Well, no, I don't think the president would think of doing that. Now, the president of the United States is a man that wants to get along with the Republican Party and can get along well, with the Republican for, Party, the right in wing? my opinion. Mm -hmm. If you'll take the record of the Senate and look at the, the voting record of the Republican senators, I'll bet you'll not find uh, one Republican senator that voted with the Eisenhower administration, uh, well, let's say under 75% of the time. That's a pretty good record. You can't pour all men in the same mold. Uh, naturally, I have my thoughts and deep convictions. And when the time comes, I vote them. If it happens to be contrary to the wishes of the president, I'm sorry for that. And I know that he realizes that I have deep convictions on questions of great public interest. We all cannot think alike. Well, you think he'll be but able to I override voted, the rest I voted of the party 75 or 80 percent of the time with the president the last time. And I, apparently from your question, you consider me to be one of the right wing element. I'll have no difficulty whatever in supporting the program of the President of the United States in the next session. Well, would you be forced him to compromise on certain things, or would you be able to override him? Well, I don't know whether we will do that or not, and I'm not going to consider that angle. As far as I'm concerned, it's not a question of forcing. It's a question of doing what your conscience will let you do, and that's what I'm going to do. Do you feel that the uh, uh, Senator McCarthy situation, the, the censure, and then the statement regarding the communist issue, uh, the attack on, on President Eisenhower, has damaged the Republican Party's chances in 56, which is a vital year for you since you are up. It will be a running mate of whoever the Republican candidate is in 56. I doubt if it has. Walter, I don't think it has. I think the, the, uh, the censure business is, is now over and at an end. And uh, I hope that what Glenn Hall said is correct, that the Republican Party will pull together and be a force for good, and I think it will. Well, uh, Senator Butler, the president, has said that he stands for what he calls uh, progressive moderation, I believe is the way he put it. Now, do you think he can uh, pull along the right wing of the party on such a policy domestically? I think so, yes. I had no difficulty following the president on domestic legislation in the last sessions of the Congress. I disagreed with him on the St. Lawrence Seaway that I had a very strong conviction on and I had to, to, to do what I did. I led the fight against the Seaway. You've got a pretty big seaport in Baltimore to protect. Well, and, <laughs> and aside from that, I happen to feel that it will hurt sure. America rather than help it. What well, about Senator, you go, uh, when you say that you think you can go along with them on domestic policies, of course we have another uh, issue right now and that is that Senator Nolan, who also voted against censure of Senator McCarthy, has also suggested that we blockade Red China. Now, how do you feel about that? Do you think that my my position a good idea? on my position on that at the moment is this: I had uh, I've been very uneasy about not only the imprisonment of the eleven flyers, but the two civilians and also a number of other prisoners. I believe there may be as many as five or six hundred other prisoners now being held in violation of the, of the terms of peace. The I case. have always felt and have for the last nine months put consistent pressure on the Department of the Army and on Department of State to do something about it. I thought the methods employed were inadequate and so stated publicly. Now, I think that's the duty of a senator to do that. I don't consider that a disagreement with the president. I'm perfectly willing to have the United Nations try to solve this problem. If the United Nations is unable to solve it in a peaceful way, then I feel that the sovereign power of the United States has been challenged and that challenge must be met. We must protect our nationals. Well, do you Senator, think we should go it alone? Well, now, I don't care how we go it, but we must protect our nationals. An American citizen drafted into the army against his will and sent to a foreign country must have the protection of the United States with him. And it must be with him all the time. And I think all good Americans want to see those boys protected. Senator, they're over there fighting for their country. They're fighting to preserve this form of government. What kind of time limit and what sort of compliance do you expect 
In regard to uh, the United Nations action in this case, before you would say the United States must take other action? Well, in, in the present circumstances, I think we have made admirable time. I think the United Nations, and I will say that I have not been one that's been too strong. I've supported the United Nations, but I've done it with the hope that we could do something with it, not with the complete belief that we could. But in this instance, I believe that the United Nations has act with, acted with dispatch. I think they've acted in the best of good faith, and I think we've made real progress. And I think if we keep pushing, that we can accomplish this thing through the United Nations. If after a reasonable time we cannot, then I say that the sovereign power of the United States mu must be brought well, to Senator bear. Well, Senator Butler, uh, the uh, president has said that he considers a blockade of Red China tantamount to a uh, uh, preemptory declaration of war. Yes, but he now, also this said, would, this would he mean also said in the extreme that, we'd be going that he would be in favor of it, which seems to me that backs up the feeling that I have. That if now the United States what, is sir? to be respected in among the nations of the world and to keep the self-respect among its own people, it must protect its nationals because we have a form of government. We, the people of the United States, joined into this government for the sole purpose of protecting ourselves and promoting peace Well, well Senator, I don't world. think he said he was in favor of uh, a declaration of war against China. He so didn't say that, but I think that he did say that if he couldn't succeed through the United Nations, that he would be in favor of a of I a don't blockade. quite agree with you. I think that marks sort of a split between the you and the I president. Don't, I don't think it does, really. I don't think that's going to be a split between the... But in other words, you think the United Nations uh, can I take care of this I think they've made excellent progress. I think they've done, in this particular instance, I think they've done a magnificent job. And I wish them every success. Well, thank you very much, Senator Butler. It's been a great pleasure to have you up here tonight. Certainly delighted to have been with you. The opinions expressed on the Longines Chronoscope were those of the speakers. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Larry Lasseur and Walter Cronkite. Our distinguished guest was the Honorable John M. Butler, United States Senator from Maryland. A Longines watch makes the most perfect Christmas gift. It has beauty, elegance, and enduring quality. A universal reputation as just about the finest of the world's watches. The beating heart of every Longines watch is a watch movement so exquisitely finished as to defy normal wear and friction, to achieve unsurpassed timekeeping accuracy and reliability. Thus does Longines inner quality match Longines outer elegance. Cased in precious metal, styled in the best of good taste, a Longines watch is a joy to own, an enduring symbol of your affection, a perfect Christmas gift. And among the finest of the world's watches, only Longines enjoy the prestige of winning 10 World's Fair Grand Prizes, 28 gold medals, highest honors for accuracy in fields of precise timing. And yet, you may buy and proudly give a Longines watch this Christmas for as little as $71.50. There is still time to visit your Longines Whitnor jeweler and make your selection. Longines, the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored Christmas gift, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. This is Frank Knight, reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, agency for Longines Whitnor watches. For the enjoyment of you and your family, there's a special treat coming on Christmas Day, Longines Whitnor's sixth annual Christmas festival, a gala, hour-long extravaganza in music, song, and pantomime. See it on this television station on Christmas afternoon. <laughs>